Welcome back everybody. As you can see in this video, today we are back in the build room. Uh, it has been quite some time since we have done a shop video, something transmission related, and we are very much overdue. And today I have a gear and bolt together converter here behind me that I want to just take a few minutes to show you guys uh, the ins and outs of the torque converter as far as what it looks like because most of you guys have probably never seen inside a torque converter before uh, and just make a video uh, showing how to assemble, to disassemble and reassemble one of these things. Uh, I'm starting to sell more and more of these bolt togethers, so I believe this will be a helpful video for anybody looking to buy a bolt together that uh, might be a little confused, but it's super simple, very easy to work on, so let's dive into this thing. So this is the bottom side of the torque converter side that bolts up to the flex plate. Uh, as you can see, there's no ring gear on this, uh, this because this is for a Duramax. Uh, so this is actually made for uh, a six bolt SoCal flex plate, uh, but it's also made for an arrangement of different flex plates. That's why it has uh, multiple different style con um, converter bolt holes in it. And if you were ordering one of these for a Cummins uh, truck, it would actually have the fly wheel flex plate ring gear actually welded onto the torque converter and then it would come with a uh, flex plate that bolted to your crank that would bolt to this. So the first step you do when you're taking one of these apart is you'll have all these little bolt holes, all these little bolts all around here and that is actually what holds the, the two halves of the torque converter together. So you'll spend some time buzzing all these out and then you could take these same bolts and you can see where they have some uh, areas drilled and tapped for you to put the bolts back in. That is to make it easier to lift this cover to separate it uh, from these two. It does have four dowels in it, and these four dowels uh, are clocked specifically, so they're not uh, interchangeable. This only goes on one way, but because it only goes on one way, you, you can't screw it up. So once you have all these bolt holes, all these bolts, buzzed out then you just take this cover and you lift it up so because this is a really nice machine fit uh, with the o-rings you might have to use a screwdriver to uh, pop it loose and then use a screwdriver to kind of work it up but that is the first look of what you'll see when you get inside the torque converter here you'll see the back side of this cover uh, there's nothing that you really need to pay attention to here. That bushing in the center, uh, it should never come out. So aside from just cleaning this thing really well, there's nothing that you really need to uh, be concerned with orientation or losing or anything like that with the cover. Okay, so what you'll see here is this is the lockup clutches area here. And uh, this is the dampener. We'll dive into the dampener after we pull out the lockup clutches. So before you pull all this apart, you want to note this thrust washer. Uh, this thrust washer is double-sided, so it doesn't uh, matter which orientation it goes in. It just needs to make sure that that makes its way back in there uh, when you reassemble it after you clean this thing. So. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can either pull the lockup clutches out first, you can fish them out with a little pick, or you can pull the whole dampener assembly with the lockup clutches out, uh, which that's going to be the way that I do it uh, because that's the easiest way to do it without uh, worrying about damaging the lining on the lockup clutch. So once again, you can use the same bolts from the cover uh, to put inside the dampener here. So assist you pulling this out. And this will come right out. You won't have to do any prying or anything crazy with it. It is heavy, so you know, be, be known about the weight of it. Often you'll see the turbine will uh, come out with that, uh, which is no big deal, but I'll show you how to separate that. So before we get into the stator and all that, let's slide this out of the way and let's talk about these lockup clutches. So this top lining here that you see is a lockup clutch. You'll see that these lockup clutches are lined on both sides. So this side applies to the back side of the cover and then this side applies to the intermediate steel plate. So that's two frictions applying there. 
you'll notice on these extreme duty converters, this has a very thick uh, intermediate plate. Imagine this is like the clutch steel in your transmission. Uh, I am a big proponent of a thick clutch steel in a transmission. I believe less clutches and thicker steels to be uh, the best holding power and longevity due to the heat that a thick reaction plate or a thick uh, steel is able to uh, withstand. So I really like these extreme duty gearing converters for that design. And then another clutch lining, same deal, double sided lining. So even though this only has two clutches, it is a triple disc converter because it is applying on three sides of the clutch linings. So that is why this is a triple disc converter. And these converters hold big, big, big horsepower. Uh, you can make pretty much whatever horsepower you want uh, on this combination here. And I've never had anybody burn up a lockup clutch on these. So really, really nice, well-built uh, converter setup. Okay, so now we're back to the dampener. Since we've identified what the lockup clutches are and how their stack up is, uh, we will now separate the dampener from the turbine. And you'll see that the reason that these two like to come out as an assembly is because there is a spline on the back side of this and they spline together. So let's separate these. Just want to wiggle it up a little bit. Anytime you're working on a torque converter, your transmission, you want to be careful because there's an O-ring seal on the turbine input here on the turbine hub and that o-ring seal rides inside the dampener plate here and you want to make sure that uh, you pull these apart really nice so that way you don't tear the o-ring or mess up your sealing surface here so this is what is referred to as the dampener the purpose of this dampener is so that way when lockup is applied these springs inside of here take some of the force away from the input shaft. If you don't have a dampener in your torque converter, the input shaft sees all of the load from the lockup clutches. So it might feel like it locks up more aggressively, but in reality, it's just feeling that way because the input shaft is getting all the force and none of it is getting shared here. Uh, a converter with a dampener does not have any ill effect on lockup clutch longevity. It only helps protect the input shaft. So uh, this is a really nice feature and an important feature when you're looking into buying a torque converter. I should also note that all gear in torque converters run a dampener. Okay, so now we're down to the turbine. So uh, the turbine is part of the voodoo witchcraft <laughs> that goes into uh, making the converter act the way it does. This, this along with the stator is going to determine your stall speed. And I'll explain that a little bit better uh, on reassembly. But essentially, the only thing to watch out for on this is that same thrust washer we talked about before and the O-ring here. There's also a seal for the input shaft inside here that you want to be uh, mindful of. Make sure that that's not torn uh, and that you don't tear that. Uh, there's the only way you really you could tear that is when you're assembling the converter into the transmission. Aside from that, you don't really need to go in there for anything. Now, when it comes to cleaning all of these converter parts, uh, this is not something that I'd throw in a water solvent parts washer. As you can see here, these fins on this turbine and this design, it's all very intricate and there's a lot of places for water to get trapped in here and these things are just steel and they can flash rust very easily and you do not want any rust or water contamination inside your torque converter at all so uh, this is not an area where I would put in any sort of water-based solvent cleaner I prefer to just clean these with transmission fluid uh, that way you don't have to worry about solvent contamination I just run a you know, a couple quarts of transmission fluid through all these pieces and slosh it around. And you'll see when you do that, the fluid will, it'll go all in here and it'll actually do a really good job cleaning. Transmission's a very good cleaner. Uh, but 
transmission fluid is a good cleaner. But if you have a, a major failure with your transmission and you have a lot of, of metal and debris and crud in here, then uh, you can definitely use brake clean and shop air to clean this out. And I would make sure that you know you blow it out as well as possible. And then as soon as you're done with the brake clean and the shop air, soak this thing in transmission fluid, slosh it around uh, to make sure that you prevent flash rust. Okay, so now we're back to the other side of the converter here. So this uh, fan blade looking deal here is what is called a stator. So what this stator does is, as you can see by the design of it, the fan shaped design, the fluid will actually come across this and it will pressurize against the back side of the cover here and it'll pressurize against the turbine like I showed you and those essentially are two fan blades blowing into each other is basically the concept of a torque converter and that is what pressurizes the converter and gives you a stall speed so you can change the angle of these blades you can change the count of these blades how many are on here you can change the profile there's endless things that you can change with these blades that will affect the way uh, that the converter works. The turbine, the pump side, everything of this converter, uh, as far as all the metal stuff you see, is, is actually OEM. All of the converter stuff uh, in the 4748 applications, for the most part, uses OEM style um, internal parts. But and that's why there's a core charge on your torque converter because if we made all this stuff from you know billet then there would be no need for a core charge. But uh, if you made all this stuff from billet, it would be extremely expensive. There's actually only a couple companies in the world that make uh, all billet torque converters, and those things are eight or ten thousand dollars. So uh, when you're talking about changing stall speeds on 4748, you're changing this bad boy right here. You're changing the stator. Uh, this particular stator here is set up for that Duramax, uh, so this is going to be a different stator than what we would run in, say, a Cummins race application. And because this is a bolt-together converter, this customer has a couple different stator designs uh, that he has purchased so that he can uh, essentially swap this stator around to change the way that this converter acts. Uh, you can loosen it up, you can tighten it up, you can change the way it responds down track. I think a big misconception with torque converters is that the stall speed or the stator design is just to help you spool and then after that uh, you just rely on lockup and that's really the exact opposite of, of, of how your thought process should be. Yes, the stator is important for spool up. You need to be able to spool well. Uh, but this stator is also going to directly affect the way that the fluid coupling is inside this torque converter, how efficient it is down track, and how quickly it gets efficient. Uh, you can very easily have too tight of a torque converter for your combination, which would mean that this stator, uh, is, is the design of it is too tight, and that will actually slow you down at the track. And then you can have the other end of the spectrum where this is too loose and it is not efficient enough and that'll slow you down. So there's no magic recipe for torque converters uh, and that's why we have lots of different stator options for the racing application stuff. It's a lot easier on the street trucks uh, because these stator designs... Uh, they have a very broad range of performance, and, and they can really, you know, 1,000 horsepower and down trucks, you can pretty much pick a stator if you're uh, experienced with this stuff, and it'll work really well. And, and then, you know, even if it is a tad bit on the loose side, you have the lockup for it when you're cruising down the road. You don't have to necessarily worry as much about the heat. But if this was a non-lock or a race application, this stator right here is everything. So... Enough about going into the details on the stators. Let's talk about taking the stator out and what you need to watch for. So there's only two things that are important about this stator. It only goes in one way, so uh, you really can't mess that up. But these bearings are specific on which way they go. This top bearing on the stator here, as you'll see, it has a lip on this side and then it has an inner lip on this side. And you want to make sure that the rounded side is facing down. 
And when you're actually assembling these, it'll make sense because if you try to assemble it like this and you try to spin it with the turbine on there, it it just won't uh, spin nice and freely. And then you'll know that you have this in upside down. If you did put this in upside down and you put it all together, it would tear this thing up really quickly. So you want to make sure that you're doing this right. The rounded side of this goes down. So that way you have this nice full rounded flange side here. So when the turbine comes in, it captivates over that very nicely. So pulling the stator out, there's that a same bearing is of the exact same style on the back side here. And you'll see that this is the same way. The flat side with the rounded edge needs to lay onto the pump side of the converter here. And the rounded side that's facing up needs to go into the bottom of the stator. So that way these two machine parts sit together nicely. And as you see, it spins really nice when it's together like that. If you put it together like this, it's hard to spin. Uh, if you were actually here feeling it, you could feel that it's hard to spin. And it doesn't spin at all on the pump side. So it's important to know the orientation of those bearings. So like the rest of the parts in the torque converter, like we discussed, you don't want to clean this with uh, any sort of water-based. Same concept. Uh, you don't want the metal to get rusted or flash rust or hide contaminants in it. So do the same process as we discussed on the turbine. So now we'll talk about putting this thing back together. So first thing first, you want to make sure that that you want to make sure that that uh, lower bearing is orientated the correct way. And you can use a little bit of uh, trans gel. If, if you have that, if you're a transmission builder, you can put a little bit on that uh, to hold this bearing in there like so. Uh, but you never want to use any sort of chassis grease. That's a big no-no on anything transmission related. And then if you don't have anything like that, you can just set the bearing in there and try to center it up as best as possible. And then you can slide the stator down in there. And when it all mates in nicely, it'll spin nice and free like so. And then same deal, you want to make sure that this top bearing is orientated the correct way. And then you're ready to put the turbine on. So you'll see on the turbine here where that bearing rides. You want to just make sure everything's good and clean when you're reassembling these things. Um, oops. So you can see here where that bearing rides on the turbine. And that is why it has to be correct so it doesn't... Uh, eat into the surface of this. So just like the stator, when it's sitting on there nice, uh, it'll spin very freely just like that. If it's not spinning just like that, then something is not right with your bearings. You've got one uh, the wrong way. So you just want to make sure that you always visually inspect that seal. Make sure that you have the thrust washer on. Make sure your input shaft seal is good. And now you're ready to put the dampener. The dampener will spline up, so you have to get it to uh, spline up and go over the O-ring together. And then when you go down over the O-ring with it, you just want to put a little bit of pressure on each side. And work it into place and when it makes a nice thud noise like that it's good and in place and you always want to spin that again you see that spinning freely so uh, you know that the, everything is kosher up to this point and then when I'm reassembling anything transmission related like this I always make sure that there's a good amount of transmission fluid on this uh, just in case this torque converter does sit around for a while before it gets fluid in it so make sure that nothing has any flash rushing rusting can't talk today. So our first lockup clutch, they're not uh, specific on side. It's not specific which one goes in first. You'll see that the inner tabs here lock into those inner tabs on the dampener plate. And nothing special here. They'll just fall right in. And then so one lockup clutch and then this intermediate steel. You'll see the tabs for the intermediate steel are on the outside of the converter here. And that is because when the lockup is commanded, when these clutches apply, you're actually 
making this converter mechanically locked together. So you're locking the input shaft directly to the torque converter, which is locking it directly to the crank. So it's one to one like a manual at that point. And then at that point, your stall speed no longer matters because it's one to one. So once your intermediate plate is in, put your last lockup clutch in, enter tabs there, boom, all said and done. And then uh, before you put the plate back on the cover, you'll want to make sure that this o-ring is good, make sure this o-ring has a little bit of lube on it, make sure that thrust washer is still there, and then make sure that you take the bolts out of the dampener here that you were using to help pull this thing out with, otherwise that piece won't go on, and then orientate the cover until it goes over all four of the dowels here, and then it'll bolt right back together. It should go together nice and easy, no force. Just get this thing on the dowels, get it nice and even, and a little bit of pressure, and it'll fall down like that. And then all the only thing you have to do left after this is run all of the bolts back in this thing, torque these babies back down, and you're ready to slap the converter back in. So there you have it, a little rundown on a gear in bolt together torque converter, a little bit of information on how it works, and if you have one, how to service that thing yourself. Uh, if you're interested in any more information on those things, give me a call, 859-466-7737, uh, uh, shoot me a message uh, over at the info at getloganbuilt.com, the email, uh, you can get on my Instagram, my Facebook, it, you, there's multiple different ways to get a hold of me, drop a comment in this video, uh, whatever means necessary, and we can talk about uh, your specific application and some of the reasons that you would want a bolt together. So uh, if you guys like this kind of transmission content, uh, more you know specific ins and outs type of stuff, let me know in the comments below. Uh, racing season is quickly ending and build season is upon us. So I want to ramp back up into the more of the educational type videos. I know a lot of you guys are going to be uh, working on your trucks this winter, getting new parts, new builds, new transmissions. So I want to get rolling on getting this information out there so you guys can start making decisions on where you're going to go with your builds. So I appreciate it guys like always and we will see you next time.